Okay, I'm back to explain the difference between series and parallel circuits. And one of the best ways to kind of explain the difference between things is to compare and contrast the two. So I have two circuits here, a series circuit on the left and a parallel circuit on the right. We're going to get the currents flowing through these circuits just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on in each circuit. It looks like the current coming out of the battery on the series circuit is a little lower or maybe even quite a bit lower than the current coming out of the battery for the parallel circuit. Um, we've got two components, R1 and R2. They have identical characteristics. They're 0.5 ohm resistances. And even though we're using light bulbs here, light bulbs are resistances just like your kitchen oven is, your a coffee pot is in your home. A lamp, all these things in your home, these loads, have resistances to them. And a lamp is no different. So we're using a lamp because you can kind of see it doing something other than just sitting there. Later on, we'll work with resistors. Um, but right now, I just kind of like using the lamps because they kind of convey a lot of information. So these two circuits are obviously very different looking. We're using the same component values, same voltage values, but they act very differently. And let's talk about why that is. On the series circuit, one of the rules of a series circuit is that the current is the same everywhere in the circuit. And we talked earlier about a circuit being a complete circle. Um, electrons are just really being pumped around and around in circles by the battery. So that's a characteristic of a, of a circuit electrons going around in circles. If we look at a series circuit, the current coming out of the battery is going to be the same as the current going into R1, which is going to be the same as the current going into R2, and it's going to be the same as the currents leaving those components, and it's going to be the same as the current entering the battery. It's all going to be the same. So we can say that I total equals IR1, which also equals IR2. They're all the same. So that's one characteristic of a series circuit. Now let's look at the, the voltages in a series circuit. The voltage across the battery in a series circuit has to be equal to the voltage across R1 and the, plus the voltage across to R2. So one way to say this is the voltages across the load have to add up to the voltage from the battery. Um, an example of circuits that are connected in series is Christmas lights. And in fact, it's a little frustrating sometimes. Series circuits can be frustrating because if any part of the circuit opens, everything shuts down. And so we can show that, and you've probably seen that um, for Christmas tree lights. You've noticed that uh, if one of the bulb goes out, and this is really for the older Christmas tree lights, if one bulb went out, then the whole string of lights goes out. And that's characteristic of a series circuit. So let's go ahead and show that. I'm going to reach up here and disconnect this component, split the junction and lo and behold the current stops. We have interrupted the current because we created an opening or an open circuit in just one part of the circuit. So flow stops completely. Now I'm going to leave that particular series circuit disconnected because one problem I'm having here with this simulation is it's having trouble keeping up with all these currents going on. In, the, in these two circuits. So we'll just leave that disconnected for now and we'll go back and talk about it later. So the next circuit we're going to concentrate on now is the parallel circuit. And in parallel, all the components are in parallel with each other. Um, and unfortunately parallel can mean a couple of things. Um, parallel parking a lot of times it means parking behind somebody but you're facing the same direction. But it also means side by side. So we've got two components or more that are side by side 
and that's a parallel circuit. Going back to series again, let's just talk about the fact that in a series circuit the components are all in, when we say they're in series with one another, we're saying that one component follows another component. So when we talk about the World Series, for instance, we're talking about games that follow one another. So one game follows another game. Versus two games being shown at the same time. Okay, so we look at the parallel circuit, it's obvious it's different than the series circuit. If we look at the current, though, the current is splitting up. So at one point, we see a junction and the current is splitting up. Some of it's going straight down and some of it is continuing on to the right. And each bulb has its own path back to the battery. So that's characteristic of a parallel circuit. Now for series circuits we said the current was the same throughout the circuit, but in a parallel circuit the voltage is the same throughout the circuit. So both R1 or LAMP1 and R2 or LAMP2 have the same voltage across them. That's why they're brighter than what we saw in the series circuit. And both of these, by the way, are 0.5 ohms. So the characteristic, one characteristic of a parallel circuit is the voltage across R1 is the same as the voltage across R2, which is the same as the voltage across the battery. This is a great feature to have. Um, in fact, parallel circuits are probably more popular and uh, to the average person. You probably see these types of circuits more often than you do series circuits to some degree. Now let's talk about uh, another feature of parallel circuits. In a parallel circuit, the currents in the loads add up to the current coming from the battery. So in this particular case, the current through R1 plus the current through R2 is equal to the current coming out of the battery. And notice these currents come out the negative terminal of the battery. They go around, they branch out, go through each load. The same amount of current is going through R1 as R2 because they have the same resistance. And then these currents merge back together again and go back into the battery again. We mentioned uh, in an earlier video that batteries are electron pumps. They push electrons out the negative terminal and they pull electrons into the positive terminal. So there's sort of a pushing and pulling action going on from a battery because of that. If we push electrons out the top, electrons repel other electrons, so they push those electrons along. And when we pull electrons from the bottom of the circuit, we're pulling electrons towards that sort of charge vacuum that was left when we pulled that electron out. To solve for problems involving parallel circuits, we use what's known as Kirchhoff's current law, which is the rule I just explained. I total equals IR1 plus IR2. And really both these laws, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law, are very intuitive when you think about it. Of course these currents are going to add up to the applied current. If they were more, that would be a violation of the conservation of energy. And if they were less, you'd have to wonder, well, where did the current go? Current can't leave conductors under ordinary situations. So keep that in mind when you evaluate these, uh, these kind of problems. Examples of parallel circuits are your home wiring, you know, or the wiring in a car. If you think about your home wiring, Everything in your home is set up to receive 120 volts for the most part. I mean, there are some loads in your house that use 240. But for the most part, we're looking at 110 volts to 120 volts is what most home appliances run off of. Your home is connected in parallel because when you plug some new device in, you want that device to receive 120 volts. And in a parallel circuit, the voltage for all the loads is whatever the battery voltage is or the supply voltage. So in your home, it, the supply voltage is 120 volts. 
and your blender or your toaster needs 120 volts to work. Every time you turn on one of these appliances, you're drawing more current from the main circuit. Now imagine how irritating it would be if somehow you could wire your home up in series. If that was the case, then no appliances would work unless at least all the appliances were on. But even then it would be a mess because every component would, every uh, item in your home would draw different voltages. Uh, you really couldn't get something like that to work, but that's just an example of what might go wrong if everything was wired in series. So anyway, hope this helped and we'll have some more videos out concentrating on series circuits by themselves, parallel circuits by themselves, and many other videos.